Welcome to the 67th Annual Florida Folk Festival. I'm Amanda Griffiths. I'm the state folklorist with the Florida Folk Life Program, the current state folklorist. We've got a lot of former state folklorists with us here. Uh, this year, the Florida Folk Life Program celebrates its 40th anniversary. Since its establishment in July 1979, Florida Folk Life has funded nearly 200 apprenticeships, awarded 134 Folk Heritage Awards, produced wow. albums, films, and radio programs, wow. created educational resources, and documented countless tradition bearers throughout our fine state. At this time, please give a warm round of applause for Miss Mary McKenzie, Dr. Peggy Bolger, Dr. Tina Bugavalis, and Bob Stone. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mary, you want to talk about some of the projects you worked on and what it was like? Yes, I will, but I want to give a little context to what it was like to live in White Springs in the early 70s when I came and when Peggy came. The population of White Springs was 800, and it's still 800 today. We're the middle of a Bible Belt, so it was a very conservative community, and therefore their uh, people were looking with suspicion on newcomers into town. But fortunately, I was taken under the wing of some of the uh, people in the community and was introduced around. So I had an introduction to the community as the artist in residence. So when Peggy came, I could share that introduction with her. And I'll be always grateful for the early fieldwork experience that you gave me back in the day. And we had quite adventures traveling out and about in the state of Florida. But the earliest project that I remember working as the artist in residence in the community and working with Peggy Bulger, because I was teaching basketry at the time and because I understood basket structures, and, and there was a huge crafts movement in Florida at the time. People were making baskets and all kinds of things were going on with weavers and, and, and people um, wanting to make those kinds of products that we might associate with pioneer skills. And I knew basket makers, and because of Peggy's work, I was being introduced to the uh, folk artists that were traditional basket makers. So we came up with this exhibit called Florida Basketry, Continuity and Change. And it was really exciting for me. It was a traveling exhibit. It traveled all over Florida. I, I got to go and give presentations, and that was thrilling for me. And I met basket makers all over the state, and it, it was an amazing project and I was kind of sorry to see that end. I did dig up an old brochure back at, from back in the day and was amazed like oh my gosh you know it just seems like a little history book now. But that's, that was one of my uh, big first projects but I assisted on all kinds of research working with the Seminole Indians the early technology that we used back in the day, do y'all remember slide tape programs? <laughs> well, the Florida Folk Life Program did a whole series of slide tape programs that were then sent out to schools, and I did some research with the Seminole Indians on basketry traditions, of course, and some of the uh, tourist art that was being done, and um, assisted Peggy with other projects that were happening, because I had my own duties here as the artist in residence, but I was also asked by the park to help with the um, crafts area for the festival, and I became an advocate for the crafts people and was really able to bring in traditional crafts to be present here in the crafts area, and I think that was a big first, first start. I was wanting to tell some really uh, funny and strange stories about field work. I don't know if that's appropriate it or is. not. <laughs> okay. It is indeed. So you can imagine, here, Mary and I actually were we're doing a lot of field work early in the early 70s. We definitely were hippies. You know, we were different in the town. And uh, we get this call out of the blue from this man, Herb Hiller, who he was the, um, at the time, he was a vice president for Norwegian Caribbean Cruise Lines, and he's from Miami. I've never met the man. He's just on the phone. And he's talking a mile a minute, and he's saying, well, we want to do a Bahamian Goombe Festival in Miami. And I and you're the state folklorist. You know, can you come down and do it? I said, well, uh, yes, my, me and my colleague, we'll, we'll come down and talk to you. So he said, well, I live in Coconut Grove. Just come on down. We'll have a business meeting. So <laughs> Mary and I, you know, we're up in rural North Florida, so we dress up in a little business suit, you know, our little 
pantsuit, and uh, we ha I had a briefcase even, and I remember we went to Coconut <laughs> Grove, and we're thinking we're going to be, I, I imagined Herb Hiller as being, you know, obese with a cigar, and like, you know, <laughs> let me tell you, little girl, what we're going to do, you know, and so I, I'm like going to be very professional, so we go down to Coconut <laughs> Grove, and we ring the doorbell, and this man with a long ponytail and a big beard and nothing on but a towel comes to the door. <laughs> and he says, hi, I'm Herb. We're back in the pool. Come on, let's go. And so sure enough, he had th his business associates were all naked in the pool. And he <laughs> threw off his towel. And here I am with my heels and my suit and my briefcase. <laughs> and, and Mary and I. So everybody said, well, what did you do? Well, we took off our clothes and got in the pool, you know? I mean, anything for folk life, you know? <laughs> anyway, that started I've actually, never had a meeting like that. Oh, <laughs> you don't forget them. You don't forget them. Things are different in Tallahassee. Yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think I told Tallahassee about it. But anyway, we, um, we ended up working with Herb Hiller. He's, he, many of you may know him because he actually has gone on to do a lot with uh, bicycles, uh, you know, bicycle trails in Florida. He's done uh, amazing work. And uh, so he, he has had a long ongoing relationship with White Springs and with the festival and with the Folk Life program. And um, I'll save some other stories for later. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> well, since I worked for 13 years, and you guys probably worked more, I mean, you know, there were so many things, you hardly know where to start. Um, you know, of course, uh, we worked on the usual things, the apprenticeship program and the, and the um, Folk Heritage Awards. And these were are very important programs that are still going on today, which I think really brings a lot of people into the program. And you get to see what's going on around the state. During the, tra during the transition from White Springs to Tallahassee, the, the field work component had been lost for a few years. And I felt very strongly that if you don't have constant field work, you lose touch with what's going on in your state and your program dies. So that was very important to get that back uh, in line and to also consider things uh, from a variety of different angles in terms of subject matter, different kinds of subjects, in terms of different regions. Um, another, you know, folklorist horrified moment <laughs> <laughs> was we did a wonderful survey, and Bob did a lot of this survey, on Asian and Pacific folk life. And we had some fantastic um, people come out doing music and dance. Well, one of the featured performances was um, the, the, the fire uh, jugglers are, are, yes, you know. What we didn't take into account was how high they uh -oh. juggled these and the tent. You know, so, so I, we're sort of sitting there in, you know, in total uh, dismay going, they're going to set the tent on fire. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll never get out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but but luckily they just missed the tent. So anyway, a lot of things happen in folk life that you never expect. Of course, that was also the year that a performer who shall not be named <laughs> made a big speech at the um, at at the main stage about how this was no longer the Florida Folk Festival. His family had been five generations in Florida, and who were these people coming in? You know, and it was just, yep, it was something that, you know, you, you don't realize, but we're kind of fighting this battle at mm -hmm. times. People who are in Florida, there's no line. People who are in Florida and live here are Floridians. This, this place constantly changes. I can't tell you since I first went to Miami and it was all Cuban, you know, now there's been wave after wave after wave of immigration, and it's always a joy. There's always new people bringing new traditions, you know, and it's just something that we, you know, the state, uh, state as a whole that we have to accept and appreciate. So anyway, mm -hmm. that's about it. Um, I got to run off because I'm playing with a band in a few minutes, but I, I have one, just looking at this floor, there's a whole story about these dance floors, and I was in the beginning of that. But one time we had, uh, on this stage here, it's probably these exact same boards, 
we had a capoeira group. It's a Brazilian, it's a sort of a acrobatic, militaristic dance sort of thing. And it's actually some of the roots of uh, break dancing. And these guys do, you know, these spectacular turns and flip aerial and they come down and it's always barefooted. And their, their leader, who was a, like a rock, and this guy was almost 60 years old, he would do this on concrete. I have photos of him this, this high off the ground, you know, and landing on his bare feet. So a guy lands, and you couldn't do it in a thousand years if you tried. His big, t these are tongue and groove joints. His big toe got, got uh, lodged, pinched, seriously pinched between these two boards, and he couldn't get it out. Oh. We we got big levers and stuff. We couldn't get out. We had to cut it out. At first he was laughing because it was numb, you know, but he wasn't laughing after a while. But that's just reminded me. Might have been that board right there. It's just gonna, <laughs> but uh, have to run. Thank you. It's been great, and it's been great to see old friends. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing that I'm doing would be possible if they had not laid the groundwork. They made it all possible.